Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, I am no alchemist, and welcome to Modern Skyblock 3 Super Shorts. Behold, a bed made with wool from strings. Between this episode and last, I completed the seeds quest so that I could make this farm. My real goal for today, however, is to make basic materials. To do that, we're going to have to start with basic alchemy. Alchemical dust serves as the backbone of metal creation. Primus alchemical dust requires charcoal, two blaze powder, and three gunpowder. One stone alchemy component, one alchemical fusion table. This is slightly- that's much better. Remember how I said I wasn't an alchemist? Well, I meant that I'm not an alchemist yet. Thankfully, I've done a lot of research. One important part of the metal making process is crystal shards, which are made with alchemical fusion. When we place a catalyst in the alchemical fusion table and start a recipe, the dust will be consumed. This bar will fill up to 100%, and then each recipe will deplete some of that bar. For example, this crystal shard recipe uses up 10% of the catalyst. That means I'll be able to run the glass to crystal shard recipe 10 times. Let's try it right now. Notice that I didn't get a crystal shard. What's up with that? The yield of the catalyst is 75%. That means each time you run a recipe, you will get 75% of the result. Or, more accurately, this purple bar will fill up to 75%. The next time I put a piece of glass in here, this purple bar will fill up to 100%, dump my crystal shards, and fill back up to 50%, like so. See what happened? Some simple math lets me know that if I put two glass in here, I'll get more crystal shards, and the purple bar will empty out completely. The next thing I need to make metals like iron is, naturally, iron alchemical ore dust, which uses 23% of the catalyst. So when I run these four recipes to get three iron alchemical ore dust, I'll use up quite a few of these Primo's alchemical dusts. Luckily, they're not that expensive. To actually utilize these items, we need a condenser. Stone alchemy component, stone condenser, stone casing. Condensers do not need a multi-block. However, we need to contain a fluid on top of them, so we might as well make it look pretty. The condenser quest requires two fluid droppers, but I only need one. Fluid droppers pull fluids from tanks directly next to them and drop them into the world below them. Tanks like crucibles. I now see why the quest wants two fluid droppers, because I need a torch underneath this crucible. When I melt down crystal shards into this crucible, the fluid droppers will drop crystal fluid on top of this condenser. If you have an alchemical ore dust inside the condenser, the crystal fluid will get used up and an ingot will be created. To collect that ingot, let's create a wooden hopper. Now, we're ready to make metals. Stone condensers operate at 80% speed and 100% efficiency. According to the recipe in JEI, if our condenser is operating at 100% speed and 100% efficiency, it will take 137 ticks to make 4 iron ingots. From 1 iron alchemical ore dust and 1 bucket of crystal fluid. Good thing we have all that efficiency. It'll just take a little bit longer, but that's okay. Let's throw in a crystal shard, watch as our fluid dropper fills up, and see it drop crystal fluid on top of the condenser. All we need now is an iron alchemical ore dust and 132 ticks or so. I was slightly wrong. Ah, never mind. It turns out that no matter what, you need one bucket of crystal fluid per ingot. The dust provides the yield. Final conclusion, this output number rounds down. Instead of leaving the green bar to linger until we got enough iron to get a perfect ratio, it just stops at 3, ignoring the decimal. If we had, say, an iron condenser with 121% efficiency, we'd have slightly more than 4 times the output, so we'd get 4 iron ingots. But we need a bucket of crystal fluid for every ingot regardless. A wise man told me that I needed a smooth stone generator. While to make cobblestone, lava must touch water from the side, to make smooth stone, Lava must touch water from above. Why do I need smooth stone? For gems. I'll do some experimental work and I'll come back with a fully formed design. Behold, this smooth stone generator doubles as a cobblestone generator. Why, you ask, do I need smooth stone when well, mining this just gives me cobblestone? Because mining it with a compressed rock grinder would get me gems if my gems weren't immediately burned by the lava. This is what should be happening. Right now, my plan is to periodically place and replace the lava. Soon, however, I'll be able to make a piston. This system works by running flowing water underneath, a canal through which lava can flow and cover the flowing water, creating stone. It's a little bit slow, but it works. Watch. Then I can remove the lava and just break the stone. If anyone has a better idea, I would love to hear it because this isn't among my best. To get redstone, we need more heat units than we currently have in our cobblestone combustion. First, however, we need a stone hammer and a crushing table so that we can place iron on the table and hit it with a hammer to get plates. One iron gear. One iron casing. Now we can place our stone combustion heater in our iron casing and get ready to make some redstone. Let's make a redstone clock. And a piston. This slightly derpy looking mechanism is what we're going to use to finish up our smooth stone generator. This works somewhat well. You can turn off this redstone clock with the lever. This is a very efficient device. I have come to the conclusion that you should never vein mine with a rock grinder in your hand. It seems to break block updates everywhere. In order to clean all these dirty gems, Let's make a cauldron. Then we can fill it with water, and right-click with a dirty gem. 
Behold, I'm going to put my pitcher plant here so I can automatically refill my cauldron. To get nether quartz, I need nether rack. We get dirty quartz at a fairly decent rate. You can also cauldron clean dirty stone and dirty nether rack to see if you can get some dusts. Look at all that metal. And that's it for today's episode. Next episode, I'll finish up the quest lines so that we can start moving into better mods. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!